My name is Jonathan Smith. I'm a lecturer and researcher at Yale University where I research tuberculosis and HIV in the gold mining population of Southern Africa. So I think that there's a difference between um, the premise and the purpose of public health. And I think a, a lot of people confuse the premise for public health as the purpose of, of public health. And the, the premise of public health is to, to get a large number of people um, to have one singular voice for a need for that population. So you, you um, quantify a large number of people and they have one single need. The purpose of public health is to reduce the burden of disease on the individual. So <clears throat> um, I think a lot of times people perceive a, a win or a loss in public health as, a, as equitable to a gain or a loss of numbers, if you will. So a, a reduce in the burden of disease is, in theory, a win in, in, in global health. Um, if you take the, the um, example of, of Zambia and South Africa and HIV uh, prevalence, um, in percentage of people living with HIV, you see that HIV um, in southern Africa goes, goes up and, it, and it, it peaks and it stays there. You see what you see in Zambia is that it goes up much higher than, much higher than South Africa does and then it falls back down. So, so at this present time you see, um, you, you would see that Zambia has less, less burden of HIV than, than does South Africa. Um, but what that means, if you look at the data a little bit more closely, what that means is that people, South Africa has better, better, a better infrastructure for care than, than Zambia. Um, so these people, the reason it levels off is that um, there is a, there is access to care, so it, so it levels off. What happens with this is that it, people, people are dying, people don't have access to care, and they, in the, in the life cycle of someone with HIV is about 10 years, and you see, and so what you would see is, is people don't have access to care, and they're dying, and so you see that if people die with HIV, then that lowers the numbers of, of HIV. Um, so I think a lot of times we confuse um, the meaning and the, the, the purpose of, of public health with, with its premise. So in the mining industry, the response that I got from, from the, the National Union of Mine Workers was we will be happy to work with, your, um, to work with you on your, your research, but just so you know, researchers are beginning uh, to use the mine working population as guinea pigs. And, uh, and what that meant was not that uh, they're doing research on the mining industry and nothing is coming of it. That what that meant was researchers that are interested in, in some particular aspect of TB or HIV that had absolutely nothing to do with mine working, but just were, wanted to figure whatever component about TB or HIV that they wanted, were using mine workers because of their exquisite susceptibility to tuberculosis or HIV. So they would, they, they were, they're such an excellent cohort that, um, <clears throat> to use for a cohort study that they, uh, researchers were coming in, figuring out what they needed to figure out, and then leaving. Um, and there was no betterment of that population, and there was no intended betterment for that population. Um, and that's really balancing an ethical line of research of um, what is the point of doing this research if it doesn't serve to better the population in which it researches. And if we as researchers think this, this is a good, if our first thought is these people are, are at, um, at high susceptibility to tuberculosis and HIV, let's do research on them, as opposed to let's solve the problem as to why they're getting t uh, TB and HIV, um, then we need to kind of shift our focus in research uh, and, and uh, overall ideology of research. Yeah. So my, um, my research, in a, in a sense, uh, is not very important, if you will. It, it is, uh, the, the research itself, the issue of mining and TB has been so well researched that um, <clears throat> back in 1903, 1902, 1903, reports came out that said tuberculosis in the mines is so, of um, such a dire, dire situation that urgent preventative measures are, are a necessity. I mean, the, the number of sufferers in our midst is a matter of keen regret. I mean, th this was language used in 1903. So the, the issue itself is well known. And, and what I found as a researcher was any research that I would produce, and, and am producing because that's um, what I do as a researcher, um, any research that I produce um, will not really 
change the issue. So there's a difference between um, research and change, and, and, and uh, research is valid, and, and it's important to understand that what we do in research is important, and what we do matters. And um, the film that I'm creating, um, in, in which I'll speak of in just a second, would have absolutely no meaning if it didn't have this body of research, this century of research to back up. But you get to a point where we know about the issue, we've been talking about it for a century, what else can we do? And that's where this um, idea to create an emotional component uh, into, into the situation and, and kind of bring lived experience to academic discourse came in, and that's where the film came in. Um, so hopefully the film and what, what, I, what I seek to do with the film and, and what I often say is that the, 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 the strength of research um, and the importance of research combined with the power of humanity and the power of a story, uh, combining those two things will really advocate for change and it, it will validate the situation and it simultaneously will um, engage and create an emotion um, and, and turn, turn this epidemic into an emotion. So what we have is, <clears throat> within the people that have, with mining and TB, within the people that have decision-making power in the mines and the government and the, and the unions, um, you see a diffused sense of accountability. Uh, so people keep passing the ball of this continuation of care issue and this treatment of mine workers with TB. So they pass the ball around. Um, so in, in, by doing so, you have this research that becomes stagnant um, and that, that is otherwise powerful and it makes very condemning um, Con condemning reports, but it's otherwise stagnant. And, and you see this de these decision makers have this rhetoric that is very fiery and almost every public health official with a voice has, has condemned the issue, has declared it an emergency, they have called it a tragedy, they have called it the worst things that you could think of. But you still see absolutely nothing changing. So the film hopes to introduce this issue um, and educate this issue to civil society while using parts of the film to mobilize um, both academic researchers and policy makers and what it really seeks to do is combine all these three things together so academic um, academic research engaging policy makers and educating civil society um, what civil society can do is place accountability we all know if you if you rouse civil society up about an issue they will they will seek to resolve that issue um, and that will place accountability but it's pointless to to rile up civil society if you don't give them an outlet in which to convey that energy. So we hope to convey that energy through the decision makers and through the academic research. Um, but then again, it's, 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 it's pointless to um, show this and, and educate and, and enlighten academic researchers and, and decision makers without having civil society to place accountability on there. So it's a two-way street. Um, and hopefully the film will weave all of those together um, and, and create a, a much larger push for the, for the issue and for a more holistic change on the on the issue that I, I don't think is really done in public health that often. So, good question. So one thing that is important to understand about this is that there are there's some legislation and there's some previous practices that have been beneficial to ameliorate the situation to to reduce the burden of disease in the mines. So there's some on paper, everyone is extremely concerned about this issue. Um, the point of educating, the point of, of people in Canada, and people in the US, people in Western countries, people in South Africa, of knowing and understanding about this issue is to apply sustained and consistent pressure for those things to be enforced. So there's a huge disparity between writing something and saying something and actually doing something. The film will hope to, to um, take Canadians and take uh, Americans and to take South Africans and, any, and anyone else that otherwise did not know about the issue and say, now we, now we know about it, <laughs> now you've got to do it. And, 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 and to take the good, to highlight the good things that are happening in the silica dust reduction and things like that and to say, yes, that's good, now you've got to, you've got to keep doing it because <laughs> we know about it now. So accountability works in both ways. So the, the point of ever educating civil society is really to, is, is you know, the, the targeted audience of the film, specifically the film itself, is civil society and in academic institutions like University of Toronto, University of, of British Columbia, in, in conferences um, to, to have this dual role of accountability and, and motivation for continued research and for engaging policymakers. Um, so anyway, so the, the, the point of the civil society component of it 
is to is to apply is to make sure that what's going on in the halls of our academic institution is 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 actually going through, and uh, and also to in a way shift the paradigm of how we do research and and and, and not just put a face to, and not just say let's put a face to these numbers and I, and I I really get frustrated in conferences when they say this you know these this represents this this number of a hundred thousand represents a hundred thousand people it's like great thank you for telling me that a person is a person but why are they a person like what is what makes them a person and that's the approach that I'm seeking to take not just show not just show their their story of disease but show why they're a person why we should care and why um, why we should be engaged in not just this issue but in public health in general um, and I think research in public health in general has a responsibility to convey their under, their findings and their understandings to the general public. It's public health, <laughs> so we need to convey that that knowledge and that understanding of the intricacies and the, the contextual differences that affect um, health behaviors to the pub to the public. It's public health, so so um, I don't think in the I think in the past we we haven't done that, and, and that's the the approach I'm, I'm trying to take.